Hello welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video we tell you how Joseph Stalin came to power. Joseph Stalin started his career as a student radical, becoming an influential member and eventually the leader of the Bolshevik faction of the Russian Social Democratic Labour Party. He served as the General Secretary of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union from 1922 until his death in 1953. In the years following the death of Vladimir Lenin he became the political leader of the Soviet Union after growing up in Georgia, conducting discreet activities for the Bolshevik Party for 12 years before the Russian Revolution in 1917. Following the October Revolution, Stalin took military positions in the Russian Civil War and the Polish-Soviet War. Stalin was one of the Bolsheviks' chief operatives in the Caucasus and grew close to leader Vladimir Lenin, who saw him as a tough character and a loyal follower capable of getting things done behind the scenes. Stalin played a decisive role in engineering the 1921 Red Army invasion of Georgia. Adopting a hardline approach to opposition, Stalin's connections helped him to gain influential positions behind the scenes in the Soviet Russian government. At the 11th Congress of the Russian Communist Party, Bolsheviks, in 1922, the leaders decided to expand the party's central committee. Due to this expansion, a secretariat became a necessity. Stalin was appointed the head of this new office on the 3rd of April. From that date until his death, Stalin's formal title was General Secretary. The office grew with Stalin's assumption of power, not the other way around. After a brief disappointment of not being given a prestigious ministerial post, Stalin soon learned how to use his new office in order to gain advantages towards other key persons within the Communist Party. He prepared the agenda for the Politburo meetings, directing the course of meetings. As General Secretary, he appointed new local party leaders, establishing a patronage network of people loyal to him, only a few weeks after his appointment. Lenin was forced into semi-retirement because of a stroke. Lenin never fully recovered and died in January 1924. He spent most of his remaining life resting in a countryside dacha. But he received messages and political visitors, and between the autumn of 1922 and spring of 1923, he resumed his party leadership in Moscow. As late as in October 1922, Lenin expressed his unreserved support for Stalin as general secretary and for his work with a new constitution. Adopted in December 1924, it shaped the Soviet Union. Lenin was disturbed by a report on violent atrocities committed in Georgia, reported by the head of the security police OGPU, Felix Jezinski. He attributed the atrocities to Sergo or Johnny Kidse and associated people. Lenin also disapproved of Jezinski. In December 1922 and early January 1923, Lenin is believed to have dictated a political will, though its authenticity is debated. It contains criticism of Stalin and Leon Trotsky. Lenin primarily expressed a fear of a future fragmentation of the party. After Lenin's death, a struggle for power in the party broke out in the open. Stalin, through his office as general secretary, took advantage of his knowledge of the existing antagonisms among the Bolshevik party's leaders. Many were members of the party's supreme organ, the Politburo, but rivalries extended beyond that. Several people's commissars, or ministers in other countries, were involved in the party's internal personal as well as political struggles. Grigory Zinoviev and Lev Kamenev represented the intellectual, left-wing, whilst Nikolai Bukharin, Mikhail Tomsky and Alexei Rykov represented the trade unionist, right-wing. 
Leon Trotsky, who led a group of his own. None of these persons would survive following Stalin's consolidation of power. All died in suspected assassinations, soon after Lenin's death. Stalin joined Zinoviev and Kamenev in a Politburo triumvirate. By 1924 they were united in wanting to get rid of the troublesome Trotsky. But this was no easy task. Trotsky had developed the Red Army and had played a huge role during the October Revolution. Stalin used Zinoviev and Kamenev to combat Trotsky, while appearing as the Golden Center Man. There are multiple theories on the hostility between Stalin and Trotsky, and when it began. But a huge, but a, but a huge political divider became Stalin's idea of socialism in one country versus Trotsky's permanent revolution. Stalin's idea, in the mid-1920s, was actually revolutionary in itself. The entire Bolshevik concept had been to begin at home, in Russia, and then export the revolution to the West. By 1925 it had become apparent that all revolutionary movements in Germany and elsewhere had failed. In Italy even a counter-revolutionary movement, fascism, had come to power. 6. Trotsky was first removed as Commissar for Military and Naval Affairs, January 1925, removed from the Politburo, October 1926. Removed from the Central Committee, October 1927, expelled from the Communist Party, November 1927, exiled to Alma Ata in Kazakhstan, January 1928, and exiled from the Soviet Union, February 1929. Stalin had ended cooperation with Zinoviev and Kamenev long before Trotsky's final decline. Desiring to remove his two former triumvirate companions, Stalin cooperated with Bakharin, Tomsky, and Rykov to send Zinoviev and Kamenev to a gulag, though only briefly, at first, citation needed. By 1929, power struggles in the Soviet Union had concluded with Stalin presiding as leader. 